Got another question for the Paper 3 questions playlist. Bit of an unusual one, this, in the sense that it only covers one topic, rates of reaction. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So for part A, we've got to explain why it's okay to assume that the order with respect to pentwonine is zero. Well, the answers in these concentrations, you can see that the pentwonine concentration is much, much higher than the iodine concentration. It's actually 100 times higher. So we can say that because it's in such a large excess, the order can be assumed to be zero. Moving on to part B, so there's a couple of things we've got to use the graph for before we go on to the calculation of K. So the first one is explaining why the reaction is first order with respect to iodine. So the way I've done that is calculated three half-lives. So the time it takes to go from 0 0.02 moles per decimeter cubed down to 0 0.01, so the concentration's fallen by half. What's the time period for that? 2,500 seconds. And then I've calculated the time period to go from 0 0.01 to 0 0.005. So that's another 2,500 seconds. And the next halving is another 2,500 seconds. Moving on to the calculation of the initial rate. So I've drawn a tangent to the curve at the start of the reaction. Worked out my change in Y. So obviously that's going to be 0.02. Change in x is 4,000 seconds, so the initial rate is the gradient of that tangent, so it's 0 0.02, change in y, divided by 4,000, change in x, so my answer is 5 times 10 to the minus 6 moles per decimeter cube per second. Now, whenever you've got to calculate the gradient of a tangent, there's always a bit of flexibility, so the range that the exam board allowed here was 4.5 times 10 to the minus 6, up to 6.5 times 10 to the minus 6. You can see mine's obviously within that range. So moving on to the calculation of the rate constant k, obviously we're going to need the rate equation. So it's going to look like that because we're told to assume that the order with respect to pent 1 in is 0. And we've just shown that it's first order with respect to i2. So we'll rearrange to make k the subject of the equation. So it goes to that and then we'll substitute the numbers in that we've just calculated which gives a numerical answer for k of 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4. But obviously there's going to be a range allowed for that as well. So that's 2.25 times 10 to the minus 4 up to 3.25 times 10 to the minus 4. And again, my answer falls within that range. So we'll just quickly talk about the units because we must include those as well. So if we think about the units of what we've calculated to get k, so the units of rate, moles per decimeter cube per second, units of concentration, moles per decimeter cubed. Obviously the moles per decimeter cubed top and bottom will cancel. So the units are seconds to the minus one. So moving on to part C now, we've got this extra evidence that the pent one in is also order one. So that means the rate equation for the reaction is gonna look like this. Rate equals K, concentration of pent one in to the power one times I two to the power one. We've got to come up with a two-step mechanism that's consistent with that rate equation. So because these both feature in the rate equation and they're both order one, we need one mole of each of them as reactants in the slow step or the rate determinant step. And remember how this works, the sum of the two steps needs to add up to the overall equation that I've just written at the bottom there in red. Now technically you could just add the I2 onto there and generate the product, but that would only be a one step um, process. So we need to come up with two steps. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna generate these two ions, which will react together in the fast step to generate that final product. And you can see when you add these two steps together, the positive ions will cancel, and so will the I minus ions. And you're left with that plus that, making that, which is the overall equation. And just to finish off, so it's asking how could we modify the investigation to show that reaction is first order with respect to pent one in the other reactant. Basically, we do the same as the first experiment, but the other way around. So in other words, repeat the experiment, but with the iodine concentration constant, 
or in large excess. And then we'd monitor the change in the pent-1-in concentration over time.